This is uh, Michael Hartier. Um, let me present him to you, the audience. Um, Michael Hartier is professor for electrical engineering at the Hochschule Bremen in Germany, northern Germany. And in addition to his work in the field of insulating, isolating materials, electrical power transmission and measurement technology, uh, he, he, well, he's my partner in founding the SDRA as a conference event for the first time in 2014. And um, he's also been uh, a, con a conference chair since then. And as a hobby, he's involved with various SDR projects and their application to amateur radio. And um, most prominently, the SDR system and many parts of the analysis of the DARC NMS project uh, are based on his design and realization and uh, the whisper equipment in the German Antarctic station Neumeyer 3 was essentially designed by him. So I'm very happy, uh, dear Michael, that uh, you're giving uh, an interesting talk to us. And your talk now is going to be about, is going to be about uh, digital filters for SDR. It's a short view on Hogenauer filters. So the stage is yours, Michael. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I want to talk a little bit about digital filters for software-defined radio systems and a special view giving on the Hogenauer filters. Um, I will start with the motivation, uh, some words about filter design. Uh, I think it's an engineering task with many mathematics, but I want to reduce it. Digital filter designed uh, with tools is a little practical part, which I want to introduce. Uh, I think I should talk a little bit about SDR and multi-rate filters, which is a very, uh, very uh, important module. Uh, and especially the Hogenauer filters or SIG filters uh, is an effective multi-rate filter uh, realization. And uh, last part will be the SIG compensation filters uh, at an example. Uh, digital filtering is not much reported at the SDRA, uh, but it is not a secret. Digital filters are widely used. I think many of you know the moving average filters as a simple type, well applied everywhere. Um, automation and control use digital filters and signal prediction, uh, Kalman filtering is a special application uh, which helps us in the radio uh, community for denoising. My focus will be on the finite impulse response filters. Uh, they have the um, fine, uh, they have a linear phase and a stable response. This is important for receivers. Um, uh, we, uh, we decide between recursive uh, structure, infinite impulse uh, response filters and non-recursive finite impulse response um, filters. My focus will be on the last one. The constants coefficients, or they were called TAPs, are time independent. Uh, but of course, this is not a, 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 this is not a must. We can have uh, time dependent coefficients uh, using signal models, and then we have totally other kind of filters. Um, the, my focus will be on constant coefficients and uh, structure of the digital filters. We call them linear time invariant systems. The advantage of these filters will be linear phase, stable because of no recursion. The finite number of coefficients or tabs uh, must be one uh, m plus one in filters with the order m. Uh, we 
obtain less errors by quantization effects with the FIR filters. In analog realization, FIR filters are not very common. The disadvantage of FIR filters will be that we need a higher number of M uh, to, uh, to compare it with infinite response uh, filters. I can show you in the practical uh, part. The direct form of a FIR filter with M plus one uh, equals four. Uh, this time stage uh, shift, uh, the time shift stage Z uh, to uh, power minus one, uh, the input X and the output X and the coefficients uh, will have uh, an important role in this uh, diagram. You see the output uh, Y, you see the input X, and these are the stages. We have three stages and we have four tabs uh, from the uh, really beginning to the end. It was the last uh, stage. The, when we have a moving average uh, with uh, m uh, equals 3, then we have to uh, select the coefficients or tabs all to ki uh, is um, 0.25, a quarter. Uh, the order will be 3. We have linear phase, a constant uh, group delay, and as you can see here in the magnitude response, uh, which is normalized to zero decibel, uh, we see that the uh, second uh, or the first maximum in uh, outside uh, in the pass in the stop end, we see it is minus 11 decibel at frequency 0.37, yeah, as, as, as it is here. Uh, we have a very slow roll off with these filters, and the, uh, we have an attenuation in the pass bend when we say, well, the pass bend may be uh, ending here as uh, at 0.2. The frequency is normalized to the sample uh, frequency. What is the difference to other design uh, rules? Um, Moving average, all coefficients are equal value. It's just one dB better suppression of the first stop end maximum. The IIR design improves characteristics but shows noise. So it is not recommended for SDR receiver application. The IIR design with different filter approximations can be used for Chebyshev, for Bessel filters, and so on. The estimation of coefficients with Remes or parks mcclellan uh, algorithm, uh, they solve the convergence of mathematics uh, when we want to approximate the uh, ideal filter uh, passband and stopband attenuation. Let us have a look on that. A basic filter design is an engineering task with several compromises. And this is very important. We have to do a lot of compromises doing that design part. First, we have to select the pass band, the stop band, and the transition band. And here we see for the low pass example, we see it uh, on the side. You see stop band, transition, pass band, and again on the other side, and this is a complex frequency range. There are several types which we can use. It could be low pass, high pass, band pass, or band stop filters. Uh, so the task will be first to de define a filter type in the complex frequency range, then 
define pass band and stop band and transition band. And this is an engineering task. So it will not be clear normally. Uh, we have to uh, have uh, we have to solve a lot of compromises during this uh, step. Define phase and group delay, uh, and select margins and approximations with the uh, Butterworth, Chebyshev, Equilibrial, or some other kind of uh, uh, filter types. Uh, the complex parameters with digital filters uh, need a resolution of the input and the output dynamic range. This is very important. Uh, as we have a quantization, we should know what is the resolution of the input and the output to uh, uh, calculate the dynamic range. We have to decide the number uh, representations for the input and for the output. It could be fixed, it could be floating point, it could be integer, and this is an important decision. We have to decide the intern calculation representations. Should that be resolution uh, fixed, floating point, or integer? We have to decide the coefficients resolution the rounding uh, or the representation. You know, uh, we uh, do not have uh, only a rounding, but we can make only short the, the floating point at any point as we think it is enough. Several stages could overload the accumulator. When you uh, have an accumulator with one bit and you add one bit, you get a carry. And uh, so if you have 10 bits and you accumulate 10 bits as well, you have an 11 bit result. And therefore for an FIR with many stages, we have to have an overload or we could expect an overload uh, um, of the accumulator if you do not uh, calculate what will be the maximum result. So what to do with it? Uh, and the option of a simulation system is that we can uh, resolve it by saturation or by wrap around. But this is a complex decision. Some more digital filter parameters. Uh, well, uh, uh, the last is mainly for many filters and this is especially for some digital filters as well we have uh, to decide the expected order of the filter uh, we should uh, realize uh, that uh, power consum consumption uh, and the needed hardware uh, which we can obtain from the fpga or the dsp slices um, this uh, should be realized uh, later on. And with software realization, we have to uh, uh, calculate the calculation time and the power in embedded systems or in real time systems. Um, so we decide a recursive or non recursive structure. Uh, we uh, assume that uh, the generated noise by quantization or by the uh, multiplication with uh, the coefficients, uh, the quantization with recursive filters could be a problem. The sampling rate and decimation uh, should be, a, uh, should be a, an important thing on aliasing, avoidance, and uh, we uh, have to decide if we want to make it all as real or in complex values and in complex frequency range. You see a lot of complex parameters and we ask, is there any aid or any assistance? And yes, indeed it is. Assistance for the complex decisions 
uh, there are a lot of excellent design tools. They assist during the design process and assist the design decisions, which we have to do. Uh, the, uh, sh uh, they show the results during the design uh, work. And there are excellent simulation tools out there. Uh, simulate the results, show filter reaction to step, to impulse, and example real uh, signals. There are some web results in the practical part. I will show you uh, some of them, not all. And uh, you uh, only the first two I want to show you. And there are many other uh, which you can uh, find if I uh, recommend you <laughs> find your own favorite. Uh, if we click on the design filter application after um, putting the parameters down here in the dialog, uh, we can uh, have an application uh, very simple uh, and it is showing the uh, design filter for our parameters which we put inside here. And you see here uh, is a plain text of the uh, calculated FIR coefficients. Uh, we can have it as a C++ array uh, with some commands on it. So we can include it as a, a filter dot H. Uh, it could be double or integer parameters. As you can see, now we have integer parameters. Okay, this is the first. Uh, we, we have here some several other uh, predefined low pass, high pass, and so on. I think it's a good tool. I will show you the next tool. The next tool uh, is um, where we can have the cutoff frequency. We can change it. As you can see here, the result. We can uh, widen or smaller the uh, the design of uh, the transition. And uh, when we say, well, this is our uh, new solution, uh, we have to uh, select a different, uh, we, we can make a Kaiser window uh, and uh, compute the filter. And as you can see here, it's a new transition. Uh, the frequency response, we have the frequency response in decibel. Uh, you see it's minus uh, 80 decibel in the uh, stop end uh, part. And uh, we see the impulse and the step repulse. Uh, we have here the coefficient as a list, uh, as a, a Python list, or uh, for uh, the poorest, uh, we have a Python script where these coefficients are uh, produced. So you find uh, very easy to apply it for your Python program. Well. This is uh, for that part. I show the last one. Uh, this is only for own experimentation. It's very complex and you need a little bit of time uh, to go through and of course uh, to think about what <laughs> should I do with it. Okay, thank you very much for that. And now uh, we uh, go to the uh, back to the foils. Well, the summary of the website's uh, design is know, uh, know what to do before calling the website. So you, we should know how to design a digital filter. Well, the application of the design tools is very simple, as I showed. The generated uh, coefficients uh, for filters uh, and some of them generate code for filter programs or uh, to apply the uh, result of our design process. Okay, uh, I want to show you a little bit about PyFDA. It's an open source tool. Uh, I like this because it's producing HDL uh, output software. Uh, well, uh, the design filter parameters, we can, can select an FIR. We have a low pass or band pass or something other uh, and equiripple, a moving average. Let us have a moving average uh, with one stage and 10 elements in it. 
uh, we uh, have a look here and you can see it's very similar to a digital comp filter. Uh, the output is not very good, but this is uh, typical for an, a moving average filter. We can make an FK ripple design again uh, with 10 stages. And you see this is the difference with an uh, uh, with a, um, equi-ripple design for low-pass filter. Uh, very excellent. We have a lot of information here. The pole zero, uh, the uh, uh, YN, the output uh, of the filter, and the 3D uh, orientation of the poles and zeros, and a lot of things more. Uh, and very important is we can see here the uh, the uh, filter coefficients. Uh, and if we like, uh, we can uh, we can go to the fixed point output. Uh, and for this filter application, we can create uh, HDL software. Uh, uh, this is a 10 pole uh, low pass. I overwrite it and here uh, we uh, I load it again. And here we see uh, what is uh, the uh, machine generated. Um, uh, HD, uh, HDL, VHDL uh, language. You see the re the registers uh, and the de definition of the filter. Uh, here with the coefficients inside, uh, and uh, this is all for the VHDL uh, low pass filter with this answer. Uh, so it's very simple uh, and the. Uh, code, cre uh, code creation uh, with VHDL software. Okay, so let us go back to the foils. Uh, as I showed you, the PyFDA, it's a Python design toolbox. Uh, the, um, uh, you can download it and find information on this uh, URL. Uh, it is installed with pip a pip install PyFDA. It has a lot of wide variations for filters and windowing. And uh, the, the difference between float, integer, fixed point representation at uh, several parts, it could be different. And uh, my special interest is they generate VHDL code. Okay. So this is, a, this is now the first part. We are entering the second part, the multi-rate filters. SDR designs need multi-rate filters. Conversion of sample rates is a very important task for SDR systems. Complex filters and uh, modulation uh, and demodulation should be in fast software or in hardware. Simple filters, uh, uh, the complex filters and modulation is mostly uh, um, realized in fast software. Simple filters are realized in hardware with multi-rate conversion from the high uh, sample rates down to the lower sample rates for the fast software parts. Denoising and demodulation needs special operation in the filters, sometimes with uh, non-linear uh, uh, systems and with time variant systems. So this is better realized in fast software algorithms. The first time, uh, uh, Mr. Hogenauer um, it, it showed in an IEEE article um, is also called uh, CIC filters. And this is very applicable for um, FPGA realization. CIC stands for Cascaded Integrator Comp Filters. Uh, SIC and FYR needs DSP blocks in FPGAs, but of course in FPGAs, uh, the, uh, uh, there are a lot of DSP, DSP slices inside and they can be applied to these 
elements. Therefore, there's a special compiler, SIG uh, uh, compiler or FIR compilers uh, from the uh, manufacturers uh, of the FPGAs. Well, the realization in FPGA needs uh, and has a, the goal to minimal uh, hardware resources, minimal energy consumption, and minimal calculations and calculation in one clock cycle. This is very important. In FPGA, we don't have uh, uh, we want to avoid loops. Fixed point uh, to predefined numbers of bits at the design phase could be a very good solution for FPGA. Uh, so we don't need floating point. The maximum uh, sum and uh, integer bit width uh, will be uh, defined during the design process. The decimation and combination with uh, SIG filters uh, is very important. And the SIG compensation characteristic in the second stage uh, will be shown later in uh, this uh, task. Okay, what is a comp filter? Uh, as you can see, here's a comp. And uh, in the middle of the comp, we see there's a little bit wider uh, um, space between the, uh, the tools of the comp. And uh, we could um, realize only the right half of the comp. And this could be uh, uh, overlapped uh, with a calculated comp filter. And here we see a calculation of the comp filter with uh, uh, one stage reduction factor or decimation of 10. And uh, this is a sync filter. Uh, sync means sinus x over uh, x, as shown here. And you see, these are the twos of the comp, and this is a comp fit. And when we have some more stages, the attenuation in the stop end will, will increase. Okay, what is the SIG filter in basic design? The SIG filter has a high frequency sampling rate at the left, uh, then and transfer function and the decimator. The decimator decimates by the factor of R. So on the right side, we have a low frequency, which is the high fre uh, sampling frequency divided by R. We have N stages. Uh, when we have N stages, the, um, uh, the transfer function uh, will be multiplied or uh, power to n, and uh, this uh, the the equation could be factorized in two parts, as it is shown here. The computa uh, the computation cycles uh, for this filter will be n uh, times uh, the addition, as you can see, is this, it is only an addition or a, a subtraction, yeah? And uh, we have, uh, well, this is, uh, uh, this is a constant. So uh, we can calculate it one during the design process, and then it is only a subtraction. And we have another dis subtraction uh, with um, uh, the uh, um, right part, uh, this is very important as we have here uh, a low frequency calculation. And when we have a high R, then uh, we can summarize this um, uh, equation to uh, approximately N additions or subtractions, but no taps multiplications. In normal uh, or standard FIR filters, we have taps and they must be multiplied per stage, as I showed in the foils at the starting. Here, the tabs are all equal to one. Uh, SIG filters could be, decim uh, for, could be uh, applied for decimation or for integration. 
and uh, the decimate uh, has a lower sample rate at the output. This is typical for receiver application. And the integrate uh, part is, or the interpolate part, is higher sample rate uh, at the output. And you see, you see from the originally um, um, documentation from uh, Hogenauer, uh, this is the part of uh, his figure one and uh, his figure two show both application. And they are very similar, only uh, we change the position of the integrator and the comp section. And here we have a switch which gives uh, the connection between both parts and it is uh, switched by time uh, with the time fs uh, over r or here with fs. Okay, next. Uh, FOIL shows us a sick realization with GNU radio companion. As you can see, it's a decimate filter. Here we have a noise source, a throttle, uh, and uh, we can show three single pole filters. This is the integrator part. And here we have the delay, the multiply was one, uh, and uh, we have three stages. And I can show you later on uh, the um, result of this GNU radio part. So now we have the GNU radio application with a, sync, a simple SIG filter with three stages. You see the three integrators filters and we have the comp filter it was three stages down down here when i click to execute it uh, there should be a second window coming up there is it and here we can see well uh, i activate the maximum hold uh, and you see this is uh, the uh, comp filter you see the passband is going down uh, and uh, we have 32 kilohertz sample rate, and I can uh, increase the decimation. Well, you don't see anything, but uh, the uh, the um, re reduction or decimation factor is uh, fed to the uh, uh, QT GUI sync. So uh, look here at the, the scale. The scale is reduced when I increase the decimation factor. And you see the decimation factor. Now it gets a little bit uh, slower here to activate it because we do not have so much samples. Okay, this is one point uh, only just to show uh, that we can uh, uh, make a very simple SIG filter uh, from this uh, small elements. Okay, back to the foils. Let us have some uh, closer view on the SIG filter it is, as it is realized by Pavel Demin. Not only realized, he designed it and he made everything available in the open source area. So I take it uh, as an example as I use the Red Pitaya SDR systems also in the ENAMS uh, electromagnetic no noise area monitoring system from the German Amateur Radio Club. Well, for the SIG filters, uh, we have a sample rate of 125 MHz. We uh, want to, uh, uh, to reach the passband uh, to 2.5 MHz. And later on, we have an additional decimation down to 1.25 MHz. Um, the digital SIG design is, is six stages. The reduction f uh, uh, part is 50, uh, the decimation is 50. And we have the M, uh, this is in turn, the, de the, the delay is one. And we see the frequency range from zero to 120, uh, 125 megahertz. And you see the SIG filter has with six stages this uh, output uh, of the amplitude, and we see in the middle, it is 200 decibel. Well, this is only a calculation <laughs> attenuation. It is not uh, the 
uh, real uh, measured attenuation. But we see the second uh, uh, the second loop here is uh, minus 60 decibel. So this is important. Let us have a closer look on that. We see uh, it is very uh, fine filter, uh, and therefore we can uh, we can uh, state that sick filters are for anti. Uh, we need an anti-aliasing for 65 megahertz to reduce all here in the right. Uh, so sick filters can be used for far off selection, which means uh, we have a far. Uh, um, uh, we, we only need one uh, filter uh, for the higher bands on higher than 70 megahertz. Uh, all lower frequency are really suppressed by the SIG filter. Uh, let us have a look on the passband. Passband uh, only 1.2 uh, uh, megahertz. I think it's a little bit too much since the attenuation at uh, 1 .5, uh, 1 uh, 1.2 and a half megahertz is uh, minus, uh, uh, sorry, the, the attenuation is uh, very high. And therefore, uh, this is a correct uh, passband uh, tuning. I think uh, this is not correct. Uh, I have to correct it. Um, well, uh, when we decimate this by two, then we get this uh, as a result, and you see we have uh, the attenuation of minus 17 uh, decibel at 1.1 uh, megahertz. And this is too much. Uh, this is a pass band, this is a transition band, and the stop band is uh, um, following. So the better, uh, uh, better solution would be to reduce the complex band bus to 0. Uh, five, five megahertz, 550 kilohertz, and the, uh, the attenuation will be only uh, mi minus four decibel. I think this is a change between the this. Uh, th this should be the 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 one we want to see uh, on the last one. And you see, pass band and transition band is now reduced to minus four decibel. Well, when we want to use it for a measurement system, minus four decibel uh, is not toler tolerable. So we have to find a solution for that. And uh, we want to flatten the passband. How can we do it? The passband decreases in the comp filters. The, we can combine the SIG filter with a SIG compensation filter. What uh, is to be done to uh, have this SIG compensation filter. The design compensation FIR with, uh, with a window method, well, there are several methods to design a, an FIR filter, and we use the window methods, and uh, therefore we have to define the passband and the stop band. Uh, we choose a, a window uh, filter type uh, for the realization, and well, the recommendation uh, it could be a Kaiser window. This is a very uh, good window for filter realization. Uh, the define uh, the uh, we sh uh, have to define the compensation function uh, of the inverse of the SIG filter in the passband. For Kaiser window, uh, we have to find the needed beta. This is a parameter for the Kaiser window, and the number of taps. And then, when we have uh, done these four steps, the fifth step will be to apply the uh, very famous uh, procedure uh, FIR Win2, and this can calculate the taps for the final FIR filter with passband and stopband. And I can show you what is the result of it. Here we see the passband, the transition band, and the begin of a stopband. And as you can see, uh, this is the 
result of the SIG filter during the pass band. You remember a few, a few foils back. And here we have a SIG compensation algorithm applied and uh, the transition is very small and then we start in the stop band. And when we uh, superimpose both, we obtain the green result. You see, it is absolutely flat, absolutely flat, as it could be never done with analog uh, components. Uh, and it is time invariant because we do not have any uh, temperature coefficients of the uh, elements. As you can see, it is starting uh, going down very, uh, very uh, short. And on the next floor, we see it in total. And all together, you see, uh, again, the SIG filter passband, you see uh, the compensation filter, and uh, both together, uh, it is uh, going down and down. And here we are at minus 140 decibel. It depends a little bit on the uh, realization of the, comp uh, of the coefficient. And uh, we need a long uh, coefficient with many bits. Uh, in re reality, it should be 20, uh, 20 or more bits uh, for, for the mantissa. 23 bits, it's a good idea. OK. Um, there's a SIG filter simulation, uh, simulation toolbox, which I just only want to recommend for your own experiments. The design tool, toolbox for Scilab, so you have to install Scilab first, and then you can use this very excellent toolbox. Um, let me conclude uh, what I have shown. The uh, uh, FIR filter is an effective filter technology. Lots of tools for design are available. The Hogenauer uh, or SIG filters uh, have been shown in detail. Uh, well, the main application is minimal hardware for low energy and fast sample rates application. Uh, and uh, with a compensation filter at the decimated low frequency, we got an excellently flat passband uh, from these filters. Thank you very much for the attention. I want to show just the uh, references and uh, go back to the, to the conclusion. And uh, I'm open for questions. OK, so thank you very much, Michael. I just see that, obviously, we're having some kind of network problems again. Your picture is frozen, but you've been responding in the in the chat uh, in our YouTube channel quite a bit, at least to some of the questions. That's good. So yes, there is a there is some some conversation going on here. That's good. <laughs> in any case, um, let me use the time to um, to go over to the panel and and uh, discuss some of the questions from the previous talk from uh, Antonio because I think there are some some leftover questions Antonio uh, can you hear me right now that's good okay you're moving slightly that's perfect okay <laughs> yeah very okay, good um, great excellent yes 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 everything's good okay so that's always uh, interesting in those uh, distributed live conferences and live, live uh, uh, things when, when you don't really know if everything's working right, but everything seems to work right now. Okay, yeah, Michael Hardy is online here in the, chan uh, here in the chat, uh, but we're having kind of a problem with the, with the video picture. doesn't matter. Okay. Um, Antonio, there were some leftover questions which uh, I'm, I would like to discuss right now with you. Um, there, was a, there was a question about the, the influence of sunlight. Well, 
Can you can you give us some information about how far those LEDs are apart from each other? And I mean, if you're doing those experiments in the dark room, uh, of course you have uh, you have uh, the, the best S and R. But when you have sunlight, and in that sense, the the uh, sunlight spectrum is adding to the noise level in this in this sense. What are what are your effects? Uh, is there any influence, or how big is the influence, or how does your system react to that? Are you are you changing to other modulations, or what's happening to the bit rate, and so on? Can can you comment on that a little? Yeah. yeah. Marcus, thank you for uh, for your question because uh, this is a, this is a real real important point uh, when you try to to design visible light communication systems. Uh, the sunlight uh, interference or other optical interference in general are huge, and they have a very very high impact on system performance. Uh, clearly. Uh, at first, uh, the, the most immediate stuff you can do is to put some hardware or software filters to try to mitigate a little bit the interference of, si of sunlight. And also in hardware, trying to have some uh, optical filters. For example, you can use some blue filters or you can use some uh, other kind of stuff that they mitigate a little bit. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's not enough. I mean, for outdoor applications or from some, some other application, we normally do not work in a, uh, in a very good SNR scenario. I mean, uh, normally applications do not work in a, in a dark room. So we have uh, obviously to take into account uh, this kind of stuff. Normally, uh, what we did is to add some uh, techniques, some other techniques to mitigate the noise. Uh, and doing by, by software. We already implemented something with, uh, also with the USRP and uh, software de defined procedure. And what we do normally is to add some uh, listening period where we have no transmission. And we acquire the noise level. So you have the sunlight uh, level, you have other optical device uh, interference, like, I don't know, other lamps. And this kind of noise, sometimes it could be several times uh, the power that you want to transmit. So your, uh, your signal is completely wasted by, by the noise, but you can listen to the noise I mean, you don't transmit, you don't receive, just take the noise. And after with some manipulation, you can decrease this level. This is what we do in software. Uh, actually, in the hardware po point of view, we just add some, uh, some other filtering stage in order, I don't know, to reduce or to avoid the bias level that sunlight go. Because, uh, because sunlight gives a very huge level. And the problem is not only that uh, it decreases the signal-to-noise ratio. The problem of sunlight is that sometimes can saturate the receiver. So you need some shielding and you need, uh, you need lots, of, uh, lots of work on that. But we are working uh, in, uh, in the hardware and the software point of view, but mainly in the software, because only with the hardware uh, you cannot solve uh, the problem and you cannot achieve to big distances. Now what we do practically in, uh, okay, with our system, well, let's imagine that we use very, very low power uh, LED. I mean, uh, I'm speaking about electrical power. We have just one, two, or at maximum uh, five watt LED. So they are very, they're like the Christmas uh, uh, LED, you know, the one that we put on the Christmas tree. Uh, but with that, uh, we can arrive to different meters, probably up to 12, 15 meters in a dark room. Uh, in a real environment, it depends by how much sunlight we have in that day. But normally we move about two or three meters normally with low power, if we use some other techniques to, to reduce the noise. 
but it's a huge work that we are trying to continue. Okay, that's that's very interesting indeed. I mean, uh, I mentioned it just before that um, it would probably make a lot of sense if you contact the the colleagues from the VUST um, department of the German Radio Club because they're playing around with uh, with communication over 10 kilometers. But I think they're also using some some optical tricks like like telescopes or something like that. And um, yeah, but that's uh, absolutely an interesting application of SDR also. Yeah. Um, Marcus, can I uh, can I ask a little question? Yes, to please. Antonio? Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, uh, w what is the the, the actual uh, maximum data rate you've reached uh, with your system? Uh, you, was, you you just said that uh, you are. Uh, I just uh, looked at your paper and you said that you you've got a sampling rate of uh, four uh, mega uh, mega samples per, per second. Um, what about the, the, the actual actual data rate i suppose that uh, when the transmitter and the receiver are quite near you you've got uh, a, a quite high uh, throughput but uh, uh, when they are uh, uh, seven meters apart uh, the, the, the 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 data rate is not uh, is not uh, a high data data rate is not achievable i suppose uh, yeah Thank you, Hervé, for your question. Also, this one is a very, a very pertinent question. Uh, it depends. Uh, our system, so we developed it uh, in order to have some, uh, some megabit per second uh, data rate in the best case. What I mean in the best okay. case, it's obviously uh, a problem of SNR. The farther you are, mm -hmm. the, the most decrease, obviously, decrease the SNR naturally. But uh, yeah, we sure. also uh, we also have uh, another uh, another important fact that we use an adaptive modulation system. It means that we can increase or decrease the data rate uh, up, just up to the level uh, you said. You know, some uh, some megabit per second is the maximum we achieved. After mm -hmm. we can decrease it if the condition of uh, the sunlight of the interference. Are, uh, are lower. I mean, uh, it, what depends? Because we use different uh, pulse position modulation with different indexes. So normally, for example, okay. if I use a 2 ppm, I can maximize the efficiency and I can increase my data rate. But uh, imagine that if I have uh, a low SNR condition, I mean, I'm uh, moving farther from the receiver to the, to the receiver from the transmitter, or uh, I go in uh, in a place where there is more sunlight, and before that I was in shadow, for example, I can decide to change the modulation. For example, I can go to a 16 ppm. So it means mm -hmm. that the signal is really more robust, but actually is eight times uh, slower than the 2 ppm. So we say that uh, the, the maximum is some, around some uh, mega sample per second, but it's uh, it's more like something that we didn't care at all because we we focused more on the wall architecture and not on the performance in terms of data rate. We we, we okay. sure if we use some uh, some hardware also some LED that we can modulate to higher uh, with higher dreaming time no? dimming time we can do it. But uh, the, the important stuff that we can uh, modify it in order to have a proper uh, communication. But uh, we are we start from some hundreds of kilohertz up to some megahertz. But if we have a more powerful hardware, we can easily use this architecture also with higher speeds. I mean, it's mostly a limitation due, obviously, to the sampling rate, obviously, to, to the hardware we use, mainly the LID Especially and the, the photodiode. And especially the, 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 the photodiode, yeah, and the, the TIA uh, amplifier, I suppose, yeah, sure. That, that's the key, yeah, uh, the key sure. problem with, with such a system, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, key problem also in terms of distortion, because we have a, a rise time uh, in the descending time that in, in normally PIN uh, photodiode, we are the one that costs few euros. 
mm-hmm. you have uh, like uh, something like around 10 or 20 nanosecond of rise time and descending time. So if we calculate the bandwidth uh, is some tenth of uh, megahertz, not more than that. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you have to use a more sophisticated uh, photodiode than an LID. Yeah, sure. But you have to change thank the you for, hardware. Uh, you have also to make some modification in software, of course. Okay, thank you. For thank your you thoughts. very much for your answer. Hmm. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, that's that's really highly interesting and it comes to my mind that well basically there are a lot of applications when you can lose when you can use light uh for for transferring high amounts of data and there is one of those applications um uh, jean-michel uh, you're working with uh that's the sentinel satellites because they're using the european data relay system and the Sentinel, Sentinel satellites uh, for, for Earth monitoring, they're transmitting up to these EDRS A and C satellites through a, a laser beam. So um, very, very interesting, very, uh, very modern topic, highly interesting uh, for, for ESA and, and all those big corporations uh, that, that want to transmit very large amounts of data in space, particularly, I think, well, the ground applications are interesting, but I think uh, in, in space, this is even more interesting because you don't have any attenuation through uh, the atmosphere. So very, very you interesting must add, topic. Marcus, that, uh, this is 37,000 kilometer distance light communication from the low Earth orbiting mm. satellites to EDRS. You can have a light beam communicating several hundreds of megabit per second at 37,000 kilometers. That's just incredible. Yeah, absolutely yeah, remarkable, sure. absolutely remarkable, and and I I think I think we're still not at uh, what is possible. Um, to to my knowledge, well, the communication between the um, uh, Sentinel one A B two A B satellites to the EDRS satellites are uh, one point eight gigabit per second. But uh, given this, the the cap- capacity of light, what you can do. Uh, also with different colors, for example, uh, I think there is a lot more possible. And um, I think also there we're standing in right at the beginning of, of, a, of, a, of a fantastic development. Um, also, when you have a look at um, other uh, companies like uh, the, those space-based uh, internet providers, internet networks, uh, for intercommunication between satellites, which you absolutely need in these cases. So I think there's a big possibility of applications, uh, particularly there, and, and probably we can, we can bring fast internet to many remote, uh, many remote regions of the Earth uh, quite cheaply uh, compared to when you, when you dig in copper cables uh, in the ground, and probably that's not the best way to do it anyway no longer these times. So great. Thank you very much for uh, this very interesting, very modern topic. Uh, 